if your presence wasn't valuable to begin with, your absence won't really matter. Hi ladies, welcome or welcome back to the feminine universe. I am so happy to have you here. You may or may not know this, but one of the most valuable things you possess is your presence. With your presence alone, you can impact, influence, and inspire others. And in life, the way you use your presence and the value you choose to bring with it will determine whether you are highly sought after or highly avoided. These days, many people think having a powerful presence or a valuable presence is about being seen. We are in the look at me era. But attention is not the same as investment. Attention is not the same as respect. Attention is not the same as impact. True presence and true value is about actually being able to make a difference. It's about being able to leave a mark on the spaces you step into and on the hearts and minds of the people you interact with long after you've left the vicinity. So today we are going to talk about how you can raise your value and make your presence so valuable that people will go out of their way to see you again and to have you in their life. So let's get started. Now for all my people who clutch their pearls and have heart palpitations, the minute the term high value or the concept of raising your value comes up, let's review. Yes, all humans have value, but we actually have two types of value, intrinsic value and extrinsic value. Intrinsic value is the value that every single one of us has as a living, breathing human being. Extrinsic value, on the other hand, is the value we earn, gain, or acquire through what we choose to do with the lives we've been given, how we choose to spend our time, and how much effort we decide to put in. Like I've said, the person who is breaking into people's homes or mugging people in alleyways is not adding the same value to society as someone who is rescuing stray animals, feeding the homeless, or trying to find a cure for cancer. The moms and dads giving it their all to create a healthy, happy, safe environment for their children and the ones who are toxic, neglectful, or absent altogether do not add the same value to their children's lives. The type of person you choose to be and the things you choose to do will determine your extrinsic value. Now that that's clear, let's break down how to raise that extrinsic value. The first way is to spend your time wisely. One of the best ways to make your presence expensive and to make your time valuable is to be smart with how you spend your time. If you're always in people's faces or begging to hang out every day, it's going to come across like you're not really pursuing anything and like you never have anything to do, which decreases the perceived value of your time. But when you're living a full life, you'll actually have things to do and things you could be doing. And so you'll be a lot less likely to let people waste your time and you won't feel the need to suffocate the people whose lives you're in. You'll also have knowledge to share or fun stories and experiences to share, which makes you more interesting and engaging than someone who's always saying, nothing new with me, same old, same old, and always expects the other person to carry the conversation. Many people think in order to be high value or to have interesting things to share, you need to go to an expensive university or have an intense career. While these things absolutely have value, they're definitely not the only way. There's so much you can do, learn, watch, and read on your own that can make you more of an asset to yourself and everyone around you. Things that will make you fascinating to talk to and fun to be around. From articles and podcasts to books and videos right here on YouTube. And if you like the idea of a more hybrid learning option where you get a more structured program prepared for you by an expert that you can do from home at your own pace, I want to share something that I've been using with you. So I've been wanting to up my editing skills and my overall productivity. So I've started courses on editing videos in Final Cut Pro and mastering my productivity. 
These skills will be an asset to me personally, and they will also allow me to bring more value to you and our community as well. These particular classes are learning paths on Skillshare. So instead of clicking around on random videos, these are created and structured in a specific order to help take me from beginner to pro within the span of the course while reinforcing what I've learned along the way. With my kind of schedule, my favorite thing about this method is having access anywhere with internet and the ability to do things at my own pace because some days I can put in an hour or two and some days I can only do 15 minutes. I also like how I can choose an instructor who presents the information in a way that clicks for me. I want you to be able to try this out too and bring some additional value to yourself. Whether you're interested in learning a new language, how to sell your homemade products, photography, social media, or just how to be more productive. And that's why I'm super excited that Skillshare has sponsored this portion of the video. But I'm even more excited to tell you they are offering the first 500 people who use my link to join one free month of access to Skillshare. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with literally thousands of classes to choose from that are led by professionals. Some of these courses take days and some take less than an hour, so I can only imagine how much you can learn and get done in that 30 days. This is an amazing way to invest in yourself, bring more value to yourself, and really enhance how we use our free time. So if you're interested in learning or getting better at pretty much anything under the sun, make sure you're one of the first 500 people to click the link and claim this offer for a free month of Skillshare. Use your time wisely, okay? The next thing is to make sure you understand the value equation or your value package, which is made up of your desirability, what you do or contribute, and the fear of losing you. Desirability is going to include all of the traits you possess that both you and others find valuable or desirable. Different things are desirable to different people in different settings, but there are also things that are universally desirable. Now, when we hear desirability, we may instantly think of things like beauty and money, and those things are certainly desirable for several reasons, and they definitely help. But I think a lot of times, we also overlook other things that are generally desirable and also more easily attainable, like simply taking care of yourself, being disciplined, having great hygiene, being warm, having good manners and etiquette. Another extremely desirable trait that people forget about is confidence. I have an entire video on confidence, so if you want to build your confidence and make sure you know the difference between confidence and arrogance, be sure to watch that. When it comes to what you do or what you contribute, remember your desirability will only take you so far. If you look great or have a great career, but treat people poorly, that's going to lower your value. If you always have your hand out, but never contribute, that will actually make people avoid you. Now, again, when we hear contribute, we may think huge things like being able to give lavish gifts, donate lots of money, or doing something like saving lives as a doctor or nurse. And those are amazing contributions. But again, I must say, don't overlook the day-to-day -day contributions as well. Remember I said your presence can impact, influence, and inspire. So understand your smile, your warmth, your encouragement can make other people feel welcome, safe, or uplifted. And these may sound small until you hear someone say, being around you always puts me in a good mood. You're the highlight of my day. I'd love to see you more often. So think about what people notice about you and what it is people will miss about you when you're not around. Because the truth is, if your presence isn't valuable, then your absence won't really matter. And the third component of the formula is the fear of losing you. This shouldn't come from a toxic place. It should be a healthy fear. It should just mean that it's clear you have respect for yourself and respect for your time. There should be an awareness 
that your presence is not unconditional, that there are conditions for you to show up and conditions for you to stay. Each disrespectful thing you silently accept from someone decreases their fear of losing you, which decreases your value in their eyes. Next, understand and apply value variation. When I say value variation, I mean understand that value varies depending where you go or who you ask. A warm coat, for example, is going to be way more valuable in Alaska than in Hawaii. Same exact coat valued in two completely different ways based on location. Instead of standing on the beaches of Hawaii trying to lecture people about all the amazing features of the coat, it makes much more sense to take the coat to the people in Alaska who already understand the value of a good coat and have a need for it. And this is what is ultimately meant by go where you're wanted or go where you're valued. Different traits and different skills have different value in different places and at different times. So instead of begging or being angry that someone doesn't see your value, realize that in certain places and with certain people, the traits you possess are already viewed as valuable. And I'm not saying we shouldn't work on more systemic issues. I'm referring here more to personal and professional instances. Another part of value variation is also remembering there is a time and place for everything. Your funny side that's a hit at parties might not be appreciated at a funeral. Your office or your classroom may not be the best place to showcase your sexy side that you use with your husband. So always remember to assess people and situations to understand what's valuable to them and go to the places where what you have to offer is already valued. Also remember to apply the varied traits you possess in the appropriate situations to reap the benefits. And to piggyback on value variation, my final tip, a bonus tip if you will, is to tap into your surroundings and bring the value that's needed. This is a little more advanced, which is why it's a bonus, but it's so powerful that it's borderline magic. This is about using our natural feminine abilities like intuition and empathy to tap into the environment and the people around us and see what's missing or what's needed and then choosing to bring value that way. I like to use my shirt, pants, shoes example when I work on this concept with people in person. So if you're outside and you see someone has a shirt and pants on and no shoes, the most valuable thing to them in that moment is going to be a pair of shoes. If they have a shirt and shoes on but no pants, the most valuable thing to them is going to be a pair of pants and so on and so on. I think sometimes people get so caught up in thinking, I make such great pants. Why doesn't this person appreciate this perfectly pressed pair of pants that I'm offering them? And I try to explain to them that it might be because that's not what's missing in their life. They already have pants. So even though yours are spectacular, that's not what they need. And this is where feminine energy comes in. We have this incredible ability to sense needs and to listen and to nurture and uplift. And because we forget that or don't know how to use that, we end up doing all this extra labor and still don't end up with the results we want. For example, I think a lot of times women come into relationships with men and when they think about what it is they want to contribute or what they can quote unquote bring to the table, they're so busy trying to match what that man brings to the relationship, trying to show they can do what he can do. But a lot of the time, that's not what he needs because he already has pants. So he needs the shirt you could bring. He needs those shoes you bring. He usually doesn't need you to match what he's bringing, but he needs you to bring what he's missing. And that skill is priceless. If he's providing, he may not need you to provide back. What he needs is respect, appreciation, and affirmation of how good of a provider he is. He may not need you to fix his problems the way he might fix yours. 
He may just need you to create a space where it's safe to share and be vulnerable and talk about those problems. And what he might need from you is to remind him who he is when he's going through it. For you to say, babe, I've watched you do this thing and I've watched you achieve that other thing. You've got this too. While this is a romance-based example, you can apply this concept at work, with friends, or in pretty much any situation. But this is not about becoming a shapeshifter either. You are not supposed to be everything for everyone. This is for the situations where it matters to you and where what you're tapping into is still in line with who you are and what you believe in as well. There will be times when you will realize what someone needs and you'll also realize you can't give it to them. In those situations, the best thing to do is to set them free so they can find someone who can. So I'm not saying to spend your life trying to be what everyone needs. I'm just saying that as women, we are typically good at more than one thing and increasing our value in certain situations could just be a matter of tapping into a different side of ourselves that already exists. Ultimately, raising your value is about working on yourself and putting effort into yourself. It's also about understanding others and being committed to bringing value to the people and spaces you come in contact with. It's about being able to assess where you're valued and where you're wanted. It's about being able to tap into a different side of yourself sometimes. And it's also about being able to say, this is not a good fit sometimes. When you live a life that reflects these practices, you will undeniably raise your value. Your time will be expensive, your presence will be expensive, and the right people will be more than happy to pay. Until next time, ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.